Hello and Namaste. This is the almost daily Zencast. And I'm your host, the incorrigible Mr. Zebo. And yes, Tina, that's a real word. Hello and welcome back to the show. Sorry that I've been off for so long. I, uh, I took some downtime in part because I had uh, a loss in my family. So I needed to, uh, you know, just kind of focus on that for a hot minute. But I'm back on the air, folks, and I'm going to be making a big concerted effort to... Uh, be on the air as often as possible. Holy cow. The things that have happened in the past three weeks are huge. Huge. Um, For any uh, regular listener who's wondering why I didn't do a Total Eclipse of the Sun episode, it was right in the middle of that grieving process, so uh, I just didn't. I intend to, I hope to, do like a recap episode. Uh, And to that end, I have posted on Facebook a little survey. So go to theincorrigiblemrzeppo.com. Or, sorry, no. Facebook forward slash theincorrigiblemrzeppo. And uh, find the survey. I think I have it pinned at the top of that page. It's also floating around on my personal feed. For those of you who are friends with me, personally on Facebook, uh, you know, using my quote-unquote real name. But, uh, yeah, the survey there is straightforward, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Today's episode, of course, um, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine opening my first, you know, my return episode from that hiatus with anything other than, um, my sincere thoughts and prayers for everybody in Texas and Louisiana and anywhere else that might be being affected that isn't being reported on the news. Uh, that, uh, you know, those suffering under the effects of Hurricane Harvey. Natural disasters are, of course, uh, nothing new. We as a species have been surviving them for a very long time. What's fascinating to me uh, is the manifestation of division, both amongst those living through a natural disaster and amongst those observing the natural disaster from afar. It's like the entire human species is addicted to conflict, even in the most painful of suffering, you know, the most painful periods of suffering where one would imagine that we're uniting. Now, I'm not blind. Don't, I don't want to be misunderstood. I see with my own eyes, with, you know, and I'm not in Texas, tragically, and neither can I afford the time, uh, nor the, nor do I have the resources to go flying out there or go driving out there. I genuinely wish I did. Um, at this point in my life, I don't, and uh, that makes me sad because I would much rather, honestly, and I don't mean this in a bad way, I'd much rather be waist deep in water right now, this instant, helping someone get to higher ground than sitting in my living room rambling to a microphone on the internet about it and the extenuating circumstances surrounding this event. 
Uh, and I don't say that lightly. I mean that very genuinely, very seriously. I would much rather be over there. Uh, but I also want to keep my job, my day job, because I love it. And I don't think that I could if I bailed on the responsibilities that I've committed to right this moment. Uh, and that's always a difficult thing. That's not uh, an easy decision to make. Whenever there is a disaster, those of us who could be helping have to face that. And amen, and God bless all those who can choose to step aside from their day-to-day -day routine to do what is necessary. And by no means should we waste any time hating on those who can't. Uh, but what I would like to address, I mean, obviously, people are suffering right now. Not just in Texas or Louisiana or the surrounding areas um, that are being negatively affected, but around the world. There are children, millions of children around the world right now, suffering as much as any child in Texas or Houston or any other town that's been severely hit by flood uh, in the past, you know, in the past several days. There's always someone suffering. There's always a group of people going through crisis. And the calling to facilitate in any way possible, that calling is always being sounded out. Uh, you know, it's always being sent. Many of us, of course, cannot afford the time, energy, effort, or money to assist. While some of us out there choose to profiteer in these moments. And others choose to sit back from their position of safety and judge, which makes zero sense to me, but also totally makes perfect sense. Um, so let's step back. What is the focus of this podcast? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm still feeling... I'm still feeling my own grief from my own personal loss in real life uh, and I'm feeling the grief and pain of those suffering uh, because of Harvey and I'm feeling the pain and grief of those suffering you know for the million other reasons that people suffer uh, and it's been very difficult for me the last couple weeks I've had urgent things to say but not the strength to say them so you'll forgive me friends if, if you've been wondering why I've been gone it's just been that I'm no different than any other human being, and I suffer uh, often uh, for my own reasons, and of course, because I witness others suffering. For those who may be wondering, uh, I am a person of humble means, okay? So I, I have in the past often been criticized for hosting or making commentary, uh, but then also, you know, not being on the front lines, as it were, uh, on many issues, not just facilitating a crisis. Uh, but I live paycheck to paycheck, quite literally. You know, there are some weeks when I'm like, well, that's all the money, and it's all gone, and I have to make it to the next payday. And I'm not complaining. I sort of chose this life. I chose to live humbly. And I could choose to change that. And it would take time, but I can, I'm sure I could, you know, change my life to a, a different modality. I'm totally straying from my point. Um, so, many of us are left with only one option in terms of what can be done. What can we do as individuals? And that's to pray or meditate or transmit love and energy and healing to those who are suffering. And for some out there, this is imaginary or uh, quote unquote not real. And that's, that's a tragedy because um, 
it's a tragedy because it means that for all those who choose to ref to believe that love and compassion are not energies, then all of those people are blocking themselves and making themselves unable to facilitate in those ways at those metastructural levels. As one meme that floats around and I've seen for years puts it, those who do not believe in magic will never find it. What does that have to do with disasters? I'm not talking about you know, waving a wand and fixing the flood. That, that's, that's not how real magic works, obviously. I mean, it seems obvious, but maybe it's not obvious. We've been uh, distracted by fictional fantasy magic to have an expectation of what real organic magic can or cannot do, which is totally out of line with reality. Real magic is unconditional love. Unconditional love propagates unconditional love. And when someone is in a state of being in alignment with unconditional love, then they are capable of doing heroic and life-saving things. Very few people who are lifesavers do it out of begrudging hate. <laughs> right? All the haters are off to the side standing around critiquing somebody for not doing something right. Or for, you know. And all those who are greedy are scheming and plotting ways to capitalize on crisis instead of facilitating those who are suffering through it. When natural disasters strike, the, uh, the system profiteers on it, on us, on those who suffered. The system of oppression uh, especially here in Trumptopia, uh, in postmodern, you know, America, the system of oppression depends on indebting us to it. That's why they took the dollar off the gold standard and turned it into a debt standard. The dollar is debt. That's why we always have this argument now about when to raise or if to raise the debt ceiling. And if we don't raise the debt ceiling, then the government shuts down. That didn't used to happen quite as often when the dollar was attached to gold. But that's a whole other issue and a whole other episode better suited for Trumptopia. Good morning, Trumptopia. Um, from a mystic standpoint or from a transcendental standpoint, I think that the, the thing I'd like to address and convey is this. If you are not if we, those of us, I don't want to make it accusatory because I'm here in Southern California, sweating my balls, but you know, uh, but not in lieu of losing my house to flooding, or in danger rather, not in lieu. Uh, I'm not in danger of losing my house to flooding. I'm not wading through shoulder deep water to try to rescue my grandmother. Uh, for those of us who are free of the crisis. It is our spiritual calling to do anything and everything that we can to facilitate those who are suffering through the crisis. And yes, that means if we cannot afford to go there. And I, you know, I applaud those who are. There are many people out there that I can see on social media and of course being reported on on standard media. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just obvious. Neighbors are helping neighbors. Um, and, and people are driving across, you know, vast distances from other states to go and help as much as they can. And, uh, and I applaud and support all of those folks. Many of us can't. If we can't, but we know that we would want to, let's remember that we're not limited to material resources. Now, only those who believe in, in energy, in love, will find this statement reasonable at first. Uh, and thus the explanation, right? Why, why am I explaining this? Because there are people standing around going, well, 
you know, there's something I can do. But there is. You can facilitate those suffering and those counterintuitively causing trouble, profiteering, uh, or pillaging, and, and you know, trying to take advantage of those who are suffering by investing in a deep, genuine broadcasting of healing, love, energy. Duh, right? Like, for those of us who are already spiritual, this seems obvious. And hopefully, theoretically, already doing that. I'm speaking out to those who are sort of in the middle, are, are you know, drawn to spiritual things, but haven't realized that they are a spiritual powerhouse. The test is always the test. For those who aren't, haven't been listening or don't, aren't sure what I'm talking about, life is a test that we live through every minute of every day. All right. And we all are guilty of being lazy and not engaging with the test, myself included. Um, yesterday, I had a very self-care day, which could be judged as, say, as lazy. <laughs> I did next to nothing yesterday besides that which was required of me by external uh, obligations. Because I needed some time to recover. I needed some time to heal me so that I can broadcast today. And I don't just mean the words that I'm saying. I mean the energy that I'm sending and the love that I'm sharing and the healing that I'm transmitting. Does that sound crazy to you? Well, let me explain why I think these things are true. Uh, for those of you who know, I, I don't claim to be enlightened. I mean, for those who don't know, rather, that makes more sense, right? For those who know, I'm repeating myself. For those who don't know, I don't claim to be enlightened. I don't claim to be uh, better than any other human being. I'm a seeker who has been confused and bewildered and also uh, inspired and empowered and saved by my spirit you know, my adventures in spiritual seeking. Um, and I've tried on every hat. <laughs> and I can assure you that each and every single human individual is more than that which society allows us to understand ourselves to be. To put it simply, you, my friend, are a transmitting and receiving antenna. I've talked about this before on the show, and I think it's an appropriate time to talk about it now, because many of us are sitting at home feeling miserable. Many people out there, I say many of us because I feel we are all interconnected, right? And I, I don't want to separate. I don't want to cause divisions. Many of us are sitting at home either feeling miserable that we can't do more to help, or... Uh, distracted by uh, all the argumentation going on uh, on the fringe of this particular crisis. And I use, I'm obviously with, without disrespecting those going through this current crisis, I'm also trying to leverage this crisis as an allergy for all crisis. All crises? I think crises, right? That's the correct pluralization. Um, one of the th sort of alarming trends that I've seen uh, is like lashing out posts defending the free market capitalist right to profiteer. Supply and demand. A statist ideology that many people cling to. Uh, free market capitalism. A statist ideology. An ideology of oppression that many otherwise well-intentioned people cling to. Uh is an ideology of profiteering. This whole, in fact, most ideologies in some form or another lend themselves to the facilitation of profiteering through the oppression of the mind. Okay? So the alarming trend I'm seeing is uh, people debating over the capitals, the, the free market capitalists' right to profiteer, to price gouge, as those who don't appreciate it might call it. 
Uh, and I see a lot of people explaining, very pejoratively, very dismissively, very judgy sounding. And they may feel that they're not judging, but uh, just the very fact that they're explaining how free market capitalism and supply and demand work uh, in support of, or it's a rationalization of, those guys are just, you know, conforming to the demands of the market. I'm sorry. The market is not a thing. The market is an ideology. The market does not exist in nature. You know what exists in nature? Hurricanes. Those motherfuckers exist in nature. And yes, we can get lost down the rabbit hole of arguing about HARP and, you know, weather engineering and, and, and the idea that, you know, there is there might be such a thing as uh, climate disaster terrorism. Let's not go down that rabbit hole, okay? Let's not worry about the climate change argument about it right now. The hurricane happened. The flooding is real. None of it is CGI. This isn't the government trying to trying to swindle us somehow. Uh, I mean, they're going to find ways to profiteer on it, right? And those who are defending the price gouging in any way are often curiously anti-statist, which is such a deep irony. Let's take let's take a moment and really think about that. I've, and I'm not trying to call them out. I'm not, I'm not going to name them by name. These are people in my social media circle, right? And simultaneously, like I said before, I'm acknowledging plenty of people out there sacrificing and giving and helping for free, all right? I'm not trying to pretend that that's not happening. That's happening, and they have already been thanked, and, I, and I've, you know, I've already sent lots of love, and I continue to do so at those people. And I encourage those who are spiritual and, uh, and are wanting to explore their spirituality, just focus on loving those who suffer. Just, if you're familiar with metta meditation from the, you know, the Buddhist tradition, focus your metta meditations now on those suffering. You can focus on Houston if you want. You can do just anybody who's suffering in the whole world. <laughs> That's it's generally the way I approach it. But let's take a moment and look at the irony uh, as I digress. Uh, I see people who are simultaneously anti-state. In other words, their posts generally, thematically, address some uh, rebellion against the system. That are simultaneously saying, hey man, price gouging is inevitable because blah, 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 blah. I say blah, blah, blah because it doesn't matter what the rationalization. Okay. Uh, as I responded to one person, I didn't know if this person was uh, Christian themselves or not, but I said something along the lines of, hey, isn't Texas a really intensely Christian state? I know there's plenty of people in Texas that are not Christians, but overall, the population of Texas could be described as a Christian state. The overwhelming plurality, if not the majority, of Texans self-describe themselves, self-identify as Christians. Okay? Well, what did Jesus teach? He sure as fuck did not teach free market capitalism, folks. Yeah. I get it. Lots of the, the pro-free market capitalists are also not Christians. But a lot of Christians are free market capitalists. They may not realize it, but they are because they support and cling to the statist implementation of free market capitalism. Free market capitalism is not some, and I say it again over and over again because this is the way people think. They may not use these words, but they clearly think that way because they argue for it as if it were an unstoppable force. Only nature contains or embodies or manifests unstoppable forces. You cannot stop a hurricane. You cannot stop an earthquake. Those who think or argue that you cannot stop free market capitalism, sorry folks, I hate to break it to you, but you are clinging to a delusional, ideological, brainwashing mind construct designed to keep you oppressed by those who invented free market capitalism and any of the other economic models that focus on profiteering. Okay? Here in the United States, here in Chumptopia, free market capitalism is constantly highlighted as the good guy uh, the warrior, the, the, you know, the sacred divine solution to all the other evil-isms. 
And that's the greatest irony. All isms, all ideologies, including Christianity, folks, are mind control. You shouldn't be a Christian because Jesus wasn't a Christian. See what I'm saying? Jesus didn't preach, worship me, and then do as these crazy rich motherfuckers who build giant mega stadiums and refuse to open the doors for those who are suffering do as they teach. That's not what Jesus taught. Jesus did not preach pro-statist, free-market consumerism, capitalism. In fact, he kicked the bankers out of the temple. He kicked the bankers out of the temple. He told the rich to give away all of their wealth. And yet here are all these Christians praying for wealth and refusing to open their doors. Now, plenty of... The, I'm not saying all Christians, right? I think I've clarified that, right? I'm just addressing those who are not. Um, if Jesus were here today, he'd be in Texas or Louisiana or anywhere that where people are suffering, knee-deep in the suffering. And he sure as hell wouldn't be standing up for the right of people to price gouge. And yet, plenty of well-intentioned people are out there criticizing those who dare complain in the midst of their suffering about the exorbitant, dare I say, uh, extortion-level prices of water and food in the midst of this crisis. Why? Why is this going on? Uh... As I almost daily, routinely, try to share with folks um, in the midst of conversation, I humbly propose to you that the problem is not this person or that person. It's not that group or this group. It's not this religion or that religion. The problem is the fact that we have allowed ourselves, because we blame society and we are society, we have allowed ourselves to separate ourselves from divine nature. And thus, corruption. Corruption, corruption, corruption. I'm not saying that if we had, you know, less corporations, there wouldn't have been a hurricane. Uh, what I'm saying is that if we clung less to these ideological mind constructs that prevent us from being truly being the divine beings that we are, uh, then we, you know, if, if we could, if we were already there at that level, we would be able to heal and protect and um, provide for each other without all this nonsense distracting us. And dividing us. Uh, it's, it's always sad. It's always sad and a bit frustrating to see that in the midst of crisis, people loot and people price gouge. People uh, break into uh, otherwise totally ruined homes and steal what little is left that survived the crisis. It's especially illuminating to see that happening. You know, I mean, it's beautiful. There's the, the, was it the mayor or the police chief? I forget which. The, the gentleman in, in the wheelchair in Texas who's been making a lot of, um, I don't, I'm not, it's not that I don't, dis, I'm not trying to disrespect him. I just can't quite remember his name and his job title. Uh, but he was just on TV. I was just watching him. He was preparing to uh, welcome President Trump. He was going, who's was, as we, as I speak right now, you know, probably addressing Texas for the first time, I curiously decided not to watch it live because I'd already postponed broadcasting anything for so long. But I'm sure I'll watch his comments sometime soon and make my own commentary on them. Uh, but as he said, you know, there are he applauded and I applaud him for applauding them. There are lots of Texans helping Texans. There are lots of people from all over the United States going to go help people. And those who are truly 
genuinely helping uh, aren't bothering to ask who's Republican, who's Democrat, who's white, who's black, who's Mexican. Those labels, because they're just labels, folks, we are all just human beings. Race doesn't exist. It's a lie invented by those who were trying to profiteer on slavery. Look it up. That's a historical fact. The word was literally coined by a really, 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 really rich white guy. That doesn't make all white people evil, because all people are people. Or as, uh, as, as that one guy from the Muppets Take Manhattan used to say, or says in the movie, people is just peoples. Um, we are all one, folks. And I was getting into an interesting ontological debate. Yes, 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 uh, about this very fact. I posted at someone who was talking about race. Uh, hey, we're all 99.999 with a million nines percent genetically identical. Someone rebounded with, but whoa, 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 that we're also very different. And, you know, medicines that work for one group of people may not work for another. And sure. But the fact remains that when you, if you were to compare my chromosomes with that of any other human being on the planet, they are 99.9999999999% genetically identical. The differences in the genome that make me different from, insert your favorite person, favorite celebrity, favorite stranger, whoever, anybody, is less than 0 0.0000000000000001%. And that's a fucking miracle, folks. So yes, Respect the nuances in terms of, uh, you know, m medical needs, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of ideological constructs that we cling to, race is one we should abandon, all of us, right now, as soon as humanly possible. And I say that with all respect, you know, all due respect to anybody who's really, really into self-identifying as their quote-unquote race. Okay. You're clinging to a made-up idea. Just like the free marketers who are out there like, it's my right to price gouge. No, it's not. It's not. There are. There is no right to price gouge. There is no right to profiteer. That's a lie, folks. It's an ideological construct. Your right is to live and to love. Those are real rights. Uh, to, you have a right to your own opinion, for sure, but you don't have a right uh, to leverage that opinion into a position of oppression. Oppression exists on multiple scales, and that's something that's easily forgotten, especially in times of crisis, right? There's government oppression at the federal level, the state level, the city level, at the county level. There are forms of oppression being made manifest at all those levels in our government. As there are forms of, uh, you know, freedom and, uh, and, uh, and the expression of human rights at all those levels. There's also oppression at the interpersonal level. Refusing someone who is suffering access to the bare essentials of life because you are clinging to an ideological construct about an economic model that does not exist in nature, that, my friends, is a form of oppression. You have oppressed your brother or sister in front of you. I get it. Business people need to make money because that's what business is. But business doesn't... That's how business is now because those who oppress us defined it that way. Therefore, we become facilitators of the oppression when we reject our human nature and cling to materialistic ideological constructs that demand that we profiteer on our human being, our fellow human beings who are suffering. It's easy to retaliate to that sort of statement by saying, well, how much money have you given? Bro, I got $7 in my wallet. And I gave $2 to the homeless guy down the street yesterday. I ain't got enough dollars to give to people in Texas right now. I won't. 
until my business makes enough income, this business, this this podcast, and you know my other uh, little business projects that I'm trying to build from the ground up as a hobby on my free time when I'm not at my day job, when that income becomes sufficient enough that I can become a job creator, then I will show you what I mean. That I, you know, in terms of we can run businesses that are quote unquote profitable. In other words, they generate enough material income to create jobs and provide for others and they can also not be profiteer profiteering mechanisms you know okay i've rambled long enough i believe uh as always my heart goes out to those who are in, are in pain who are suffering those who have lost loved ones and family members in this or any other disaster happening on this planet right now and beyond that, my thoughts, my prayers, my energy go out to those who refuse to witness that human suffering without some sort of ideological defense mechanism being triggered and dividing them from others. Our calling in this life is not to profiteer on each other, folks. It is not to sell each other things. Our calling in this life is to grow and to love and to nurture and to provide for each other, which we can do without any form of currency at all. Don't believe me? Take a real good hard look at nature. The mama bear does not need Bitcoin or US dollars or rubles or any other form of currency to provide for her baby cubs, does she? Of course not. Simultaneously, our systems of economy that are completely made up are currently destroying the natural environments that that mama bear needs and is interdependent on and is a part of and relies on to feed her baby cubs. Your sports ball, your movies, your convenience store products, your fast food, your fancy cars, the fuel we burn in all our cars daily, fancy or otherwise, we are destroying that which provides for us. And I know that's a really big topic to drop in the middle of a crisis moment. I'm not trying to bog anyone down or depress anyone further. I'm trying to reach out to those who are on the fence about what to make of all this so that they can join us in this momentum towards healing the human species. We must, we will, we will face, as a species, we will face man-made and naturally occurring crises week to week, day to day, month to month, year to year. And we can either keep just eking by and kicking the can down the road and hoping the best for others uh, and patching up, you know, the worst of the damage as we go or we can engage individually, we can take responsibility for our participation as individuals in the healing of ourselves and the healing of the species. Uh, something that goes in conjunction with that fact I dropped earlier, we, we are not only 99.9 .9 ad nauseum decimal points identical, we are also more interconnected than we are allowed to comprehend. I posted about this uh, and I've talked about this and I'll end with this for this episode. Forgive me for those listening who think this is redundant. The human species is larger and more interconnected than our individual avatars are allowed to comprehend at this time. There is a metastructural energy network, for lack of a better term, 
uh, a network that we all have organic, n you know, natural born access to. What has happened is that these ideologies that we cling to, these religions, these states, these economies, these systems of artificial uh, manipulation and thought control that we take pride in, these systems block us. They are designed on purpose from a long, long time ago to blinder us to that network. That is why those who refuse to believe in magic never experience any magic. And the rare few times that the universe tries to expose them to magic, they rationalize it out as something else. I'm going to spend a portion of my week this week sending love and healing to those who are suffering, to those who are angry, and to those who are tempted to take advantage of others who are suffering because of this crisis and any other crisis going on. And I humbly beg those of you who are listening who are already spiritual in nature to pray and meditate for the same thing. And many of you, I'm sure, already are. I don't mean to sound condescending. I'm not saying that you didn't realize. But I'm just saying anybody out there who hasn't been, let's go. Get on board. If that's all you can afford to do, do it. If you've never done it before, start. It's the best thing you can do if you can't drive out there, if you can't send money, if you can't be there in person. Send strength and compassion to those who are in the midst of the crisis. The good guys and the bad guys. Hmm? Because they all need healing. Pray for those who are now rendered homeless and for those who are in charge of providing the material resources from whatever organi organizing agency so that we don't fall down the ego trap of profiteering on each other. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Forgive me for having been away for so long. And forgive me for being so uh, scatterbrained on this particular episode. Um, and forgive me for sounding like I'm signaling pe uh, sig Signaling? Singling anyone out. Um, the words I said were not said with anger or with, with uh, hatred. They were said with love and compassion. In hopes that anyone who might be listening who either was is being seduced by those ego traps or knows people around them who are, that they might have the strength to pull themselves out or help pull their friends out of those ego traps. May peace, love, and grooviness not only fill your heart, but burst forth out into the network to fill the hearts of others, because that is our calling in this time and place. To be and to manifest love. All right, until next time, friends, I have been and will always be the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo, and this is the Almost Daily Zencast Show. If you have questions, comments, and even a little hate to throw my way, you can post it on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. I can also be found on Instagram, Twitter, which I don't check very often, YouTube, There's another thing.